Divine Masculine, what's going on? All right, so um, this is my next video. Um, today, I figure I would do something different. Today, we are going to um, use these, my thought cards. Here. Okay. So now we're gonna use these uh, thought cards here and we're gonna um, see what kind of messages come out for us. And uh, we're gonna go for that. Yeah, man, it's been crazy, man. Cause like I said, like, uh, there's been a lot of people that's been trying to get my attention, especially after those last couple of videos I put out. Yeah. Well, let's get back to it. Okay, right, so we got the uh, seven, of, seven of Coins in reverse. We got the uh, Fool card in reverse. And we got the Chariot card here in reverse. So this has to do with the, a Cancer sign, like a Cancer who wants a new beginning but cannot get one because it uh, looks like uh, they don't have the money for it or if maybe they are um, in a circumstance where they don't have the money to start over. Could be a uh, loss of a job or uh, something like that. Wow, okay. Let's see here, we got um, six of coins here. We got the death card here and we got uh, three of cups here. So it looks like there was an ending to a uh, third party situation here or um, some kind of ending that came to money matters. Looked like there was a change in money matters and um, yeah, it looks like a job situation just changed. There was a change in the job situation and uh, a third in a relationship sector. Looked like they um, either lost a job or um, there was a change in um, third party situation. Let's see what else. Okay, we got, um, what is this? 10 of, um, fortune. oh, okay. This is the Will of Fortune in reverse. Okay. Then you got the uh, Eight of Swords here and you got the uh, Nine of Coins here. Yeah, it looked like, yeah. <clears throat> so with the uh, Eight of Swords here, it looks like uh, there's some kind of uh, interference here. Look like they've been blocked. They're, they've been experiencing some uh, misfortune then they're blocked off from uh, inheriting what they what's theirs. Yeah, look like some kind of interference to their money sector. Ooh, that's not good. What else we got here? Yeah, we got the star card here upright. We got the uh, two of coins in reverse. And we got um, the five of uh, pentacles. Yeah, five of pentacles. So yeah, this person is definitely worried about money, the change in their money to monetary thing. But they're being hopeful that everything will work out some kind of way. Um. Yeah, it look like there's a lot of hope here. Uh, things aren't going to be like this forever, don't look like. Look like there's going to be some kind of change or something. Let's see what else we got here. We got uh, Six of Cups here in reverse. We got uh, Three of Swords here in reverse. And we got um, the High Priestess in reverse. So it looked like... Um, Let's see, what is this right here? Oh, six, of, six of Cups. It looks like they're refusing to heal themselves from an old wound, a, a past wound, or they're refusing to let go of a past wound, and this is what's really holding them back. Um, once they heal themselves from this, they may be able to you know, move forward especially if they forgive or whatever happened in that situation if they can't forgive themselves or you know someone else then it's gonna it's gonna um, continue to look like what else can you tell us about this situation you ain't got a enough money okay i have four cards come out here you got the uh, emperor card here 
You got the uh, Nine of uh, Swords, I mean Nine of Wands here. You got the uh, Lover's Card here. And you got the, uh, yeah, you got the Two of Cups here. Yeah, okay, so this person is in a relationship, a deep relationship. This person deeply, deeply loves somebody. Looks like they are in love with this uh, emperor or this father figure here, this businessman. This uh, water sign is deeply in love with this water, this um, emperor. And um, nine of wands, like um, that has to do with, uh, they are even defending this relationship, look like. Look like they're trying to defend this relationship or this connection that they have some kind of way. <clears throat> they might be at odds with somebody or have to uh, enforce their boundary about something. But it looks like that they are head over heels in love with this person. They got the lover's car and you have the uh, two of cups. That normally don't come out like that. Unless there are some very, very deep emotions here. Wow. Let's see. Yeah, you got my busted ass seven of wands here. <laughs> Ooh, eight of wands, eight of coins here. And a knight of this here. So yeah, it looks like um, the Seven of Wands, you got, um, oh, Seven of Wands, let me think. Eight of Wands, this or that. Seven of Wands have to do with conflict and fighting and deceit. So in, re in reverse, it looks like this person is fighting for this connection or somebody is fighting for this connection with this water sign. And it's, uh, what is this, Eight of Wands? Yeah. Look like they're trying to uh, walk away from it, though. These Eight of Coins here. Look like they're, like, they're not working at it or they're um, let, trying to let it go or let it die off. And they're, like, slowly trying to walk away here. Yeah, they're like, look like somebody's slowly trying to walk away. Let's find out. This is a Water or Fire sign. Who's trying to walk away? Yeah, let's get my other card here. I'm gonna have to go to the big boy cards. Okay. Who's trying to walk away from this situation? Who's trying to walk away from this situation? Let's see, who's trying to walk away? I'm guessing it's the fire sign because you got this uh, three of wands here. Maybe the fire sign is uh, waiting on someone else or indecisive about this circumstance or situation. Yeah, look at that. You got the two of coins here. And you got the uh, seven of swords here again. Or seven of swords. So you got the seven of wands and the seven of swords in reverse. Look like, they, look like somebody's trying to walk away for something or this water sign is waiting for this uh, fire sign to walk away from something and stop juggling. You know what I'm saying? Like make a uh, balanced decision here. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I like, I like it's the fire sign. Fire sign's trying to walk away from this water sign, look like. Yeah, look at that. You got the Empress in reverse. Queen of Pentacles here. And uh, the Page of Swords here. Or is that the King or the Page of Swords? You see, I think that's the King of Swords here. I keep saying I've been looked that up and I never look it up. Okay, yeah, that is the King of Swords there. King of Swords. So basically, um, in this situation here, there's a, uh, there looks like there's a couple here. There's a, a Queen of Pentacles here. There's a, a King of Swords here. And there's a Empress in Reverse here. So this King of Swords could be a, a Gemini, um, Aquarius, or um, Libra. And you have, uh, this is a person who uh, makes sound decisions, sound judgment, uh, very good communicator, good at communicating their words, 
they are, you know, maybe they're in a relationship with like a Capricorn, Taurus, or Virgo, Earth sign here. So this is an air and a, and a this is an air and a um, Earth sign that are um, looks like either an air and an Earth sign and a um, false priestess here. So maybe this is the uh, this is the fire signs family here is what I'm getting. There's the uh, false empress here. Maybe this uh, queen of wands. I mean queen of pentacles here is trying to make herself come off as the uh, as an empress when she's not. Or there's a, a false empress here involved in the situation. There's um, this queen. Yeah, it's like a guy and two women here is what I'm getting. And it looks like. Uh, he it looks like he he wants this empress but she isn't he doesn't know that this person is a false empress or not his um you know twin flame or whatever it may be or empress like she comes off as but also it looks like maybe he's walking away from a uh queen of uh pinnacles here someone who's really good with money or uh very grounded or knows how to budget the money. You know, she's really good at uh, making things happen out of nothing with little or low amount of money. Oh man, that's a lot of people involved in this shit here. You got the 10 of cups here in reverse. You got the queen of wands coming out right here. And you got the, uh, the adjustment card here. So that's uh, judgment. So, or the justice card, there we go. So it looks like a decision has been made about this um, connection. And a decision has been made and this uh, Queen of Wands, this fire sign, Aries Leo, Sagittarian woman, uh, very abusive. I mean, she's very like uh, promiscuous. Uh, she sleeps around, she isn't faithful at all. She's unhappy in this connection. Whoever it is, you know, it's, it's, it's a fire sign that's not happy in this connection, but in the decision has been made. So this could be a divorce, you know what I'm saying? Could definitely be a divorce that's going on here. Definitely could be a divorce. Oh yeah, look at that. You got uh, the Eight of Cups here. You got a uh, ten of wands in reverse. And you got the six of wands in reverse. So yeah, it looked like somebody lost in love, or was has lost and was walking away from a situation, a love situation, or walking away from um, a spouse. And um, when they did that, their boundaries are up. They set their, they put their boundaries up. But in the same breath. This has done them a favor. They are no longer stressed out and worried like they were before. This person took a loss. They walked away and took a loss, but they're no longer stressed and worried like they were before. Whatever it is, the Lord is going to rebuke it back to them. Whoever was wrong or whoever was sending shit out to who or doing whatever it was. Because the vibe that I get from this is like, you know, maybe... There was something deeper involved, especially, you know, between the mother, the wife and the husband. Whoever was wrong in this situation because that judgment is passed, it's going to be rebuked back unto them. It's going to be sent back. It's going to be returned back to the sender. And you got uh, the two of swords here. You got uh, the five of cups here. You got uh, the moon card here. And you got the king of cups here. So yeah, it looked like there was some kind of, uh, there's definitely uh, some indecisiveness, somebody, some kind of secret. Somebody's indecisive about a secret that came out about a um, King of Cups or um, yeah, King of Cups. Wow. This is a lot of water energy. This is a lot of emotions around this circumstance. Disappointment Cups. So this uh, five of cups here, 
it's definitely about somebody walking away. But it's like somebody can't decide to walk away. It's like maybe one person is stuck. One person wants to walk away and the other one can't decide to walk away or not. And there's a lot of secrets involved in this situation, especially um, a lot of uh, manipulation and secrets involved in this situation. So I don't know. I don't know whose story that is. If it's one of y'all stories, but Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, cut her loose. Turn her loose now. Turn her loose. Yeah. Yeah. Now, there was this thing about this bitter woman here. Let's find out what this bitter woman is going on. Okay. Yeah, after this, I'm gonna go sleep in my twin size mattress. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get the get in the bed in my twin size mattress. Getting the bed in my twin size mattress next to my leprechaun. <laughs> oh shit, oh shit, okay. Oh boy, okay, so, want to know why this uh, woman was bitter. So I'm gonna pull a couple cards for that. Uh, see if we can get insight into her bitterness. Uh, where is it coming from and um, what's going on with it? So, you know, I've decided that maybe, you know, instead of being angry, maybe I could just take what they do, what um, my enemies do or what people around me do and turn them into different lessons that I have to learn for myself. And that's why I decided to learn what made this person bitter, to see what method I could take to grow from it myself. Okay. First of all, it's woodwise, adaptability. <clears throat> it appears that this person has it struggles with uh, death and rebirth, okay? <clears throat> That's why you have this um, old tree-like woman on fire. She's caught, this person is caught up in their emotions. And the thing is that it, although, you know, you have um, fires and things of that nature, in nature, the fire also, uh, it burns down old trees and stuff like that. And it makes mulch for the next person. It, it provides sustenance for the next person to learn off or uh, feed off of. I'm going to look this one up. But because this says adaptability, I'm assuming that this person has a problem with uh, death and rebirth. Knowing when to... Uh, let go of something and run to hold on. When to hold them and when to fold them. It looks like this person is in conflict with problems that are beyond their per beyond their uh, control and those that are um, within their control. There's a disconnect there. There's a, uh, they are able to. This person isn't able to uh, distinguish between in my control and of my control. And that's what's burning them up, essentially, because they're using, overexerting themselves, okay? There's no balance there. Hold on just a second. Let's double check, because there could be more to it than that. <clears throat> that's just the vibe that I get. Let's see what's going on here. I like this deck. This deck is awesome right here.
<clears throat> the woodwives dance into your dream as a reminder to be grounded no matter what life offers you. You need to know who you are, what you'll tolerate, and what you've learned to date. I mean, and what you've learned to date, and what boundaries to set so you feel good about yourself. So this person doesn't feel good about themselves. They let too many people um, violate their boundaries, and um, they take advantage of that shit. So, then you can do there. Make sure you enforce your boundaries and speak up for yourselves. Unmarked trail revelation so uh basically what unmarked trail and revelation the vibe that i get from it is that you know this is an unknown territory for this person or you know they're the unknown they're terrified of the unknown which is why i saw that it was difficult for them to adapt is because they're tricking down some unknown territory okay they're tricking it to the unknown and that right there is what gives a lot. It scares a lot of people. Most people are afraid of the unknown. That's why, like, when you're in the military, they train you to uh, adapt to the unknown. Okay? So this person may be, uh, this person is bitter because, first of all, they don't know how to adapt. They need to learn adaptability. And second, revelation. Maybe they can't see past their situation. They need things revealed to them. That's a possibility, you know, if you do on certain works, there is a possibility for uh, you not to be able to see your way through certain shit. You are called now to embark on a sacred journey. The, the Authorian Knights and their uh, quest for the Holy Grail had to make sure to take an unmarked trail that no one had ever followed or they could not accomplish their goal. Likewise, you must enter the darkness of the force of your soul via route via a route as yet identified unidentified to find what you see and then it says uh stop it you already know there's no reward at the end of the road on the end of the road you are following you are only killing time pause breathe and commit in your heart to a sacred endeavor. Vow not to look for old situations that may have worked with the past challenges. So this person is trapped. This person is not only not unable to adapt, but they're also trapped. Trapped within themselves. Yeah, that's deep. Next we have the moon maiden. New beginnings. This has to do with starting over. Just as the... Uh, you know, just as the moon wax wanes, everything has its timing, and it's time for maybe perhaps this time for this person to start over, or a new beginning to come into fruition, or to start something new, start a new uh, project, start a new um, endeavor. You know what I'm saying? Start a new job, start a new outlook outlook on life. I'm pretty sure this is self-explanatory, but I'm still gonna check it. That's the only way I can get better at this, baby. Oh, yeah. That's right. New ideas, beginnings, and curiosity. The moon maiden, maiden uh, arrives to offer you a new beginning, a new face, a facet of yourself that is aching to be shown to the world. Those qualities that you have been quietly cultivating are ready for the limelight. The secrecy was important for it has protected your new face and kept you kept what is precious close to your heart. But now it's time to come forward in full splendor. So basically, um, remember I was always talking about uh, redefining yourself. Not only is this person um, not able to adapt, afraid of the unknown, but they are also afraid of reinventing themselves. Why? Because everybody knows what kind of sick, twisted, you know, what this person is. Everybody knows. And you know what? When they do try to change, guess what people are going to do? Call them fake. And then you know what else we're going to do? This person is going to dwell on that because they don't know what it's like to walk alone. They've been a group their whole life. That's why I like walking alone. Because if I decide to change and people harass me for it, guess what? I don't give a shit. This is for me. This person is scared to change because the people who see them 
are going to do what? Call them fake. Yep. Root girl. The disowned self. Yeah. Yeah. This is definitely. And we was talking about this being a female too, right? Yeah. Anyway, this has to do with their own inner child wounding. This is a lot of inner child wounding. This person. There's aspects of themselves that they disown about themselves. It's a lot of stuff that happened in this person's life that they um, can't believe happened. Probably wasn't their fault. Some of this stuff was their fault. Some of it probably wasn't their fault. But either way, at the end of the day, they are incapable of forgiving themselves for these things happening to them. They were playing their mind. They're trying to find a way to forgive themselves. 80% 80% of the time that I found with people is that it's not that people don't want to heal. It's that they don't know how to heal. And this is one of those people. This is a person that doesn't know how to heal. Okay? They don't know how. It's not that they don't want to. They don't know how. But then again, you never know. Maybe they don't want to heal. Maybe they like being the same old predictable self. Because you already see they don't like to adapt. They are afraid of change. They're afraid of the unknown. They're afraid of change again. Because that's basically what a new beginning is. And they rather choke things down than to address it within themselves. You know what I'm saying? That's that wounded child there. Let's double check and look it up. I don't know why I keep putting the book back if I'm going to look them all up. The disowned self, hidden beauty, the meaning of for acceptance and love. So this person needs to be accepted is what it is. Weird girl sits shivering unclean and naked at the base of a tree of the shelf of the self. She is unloved, unwanted, and shunned for her deformities. Oh, wow. She has no home, but is safe burrowing underground to dwell near the deepest roots of this sacred tree. Who is she to you? Could this urchin be the one part of you that reintegrated can lead you to wholeness and true purpose? This is a part of you, the embodiment of a deeply flawed perception of your failure, manifesting a guilt and shame. Yes, like I said, repressed desires. This person has aspects of themselves that they have repressed. Oh, that is terrible. That is terrible. What else we got here? You got repairing the veil. Forgiveness. See, look at that. You see how these just like came all together? Forgiveness. We go out in the world and we forgive other people the way we forgive ourselves. If we are incapable of forgiving ourselves, we cannot forgive other people. How we treat ourselves is how other people treat us. How we treat ourselves is how we treat other people. If how people forgive us is how we forgive others. But that's not the way it should be. How we forgive ourselves is how we should forgive other people. Because in reality, we are all intertwined like this veil here we are all intertwined nothing is se separate from the other but this veil has to do with maybe like uh, strands of like in my opinion because of course i'm gonna look it up but <clears throat> this veil here isn't about hiding yourself it's about the uh, dark aspects of yourself that you have to forgive, basically, or learning to forgive yourself so that you can be whole. You know what I'm saying? That's why you have this big column of darkness here. All right, let's look at this. Number 45. Woo! Forgiveness, making a man's recognition of, of our unity. Between us all, between us all is a thin veil appearing to be a space that separates us. We look through this veil and believe ourselves to be distinct from each other. We assume that our thoughts and feelings are our own. We see bodies and objects and the spaces between them. So we engage the world in relationships between a duality of us and them. This veil serves as a mysterious illusion, making it so hard to believe in our inherent connection and unity. So yeah, I was right. Um, this card is also about the, the like it was saying, it's a distinction between um, us and them. When in reality, it's the same thing. 
You know what I'm saying? In forgiveness, you see yourself in others and others see themselves in you. And that's how forgiveness is given. And no, that shit is not easy. Cause there's still people that I still call motherfuckers. <laughs> it's not easy. Okay, then we have here, horn cactus, resourcefulness. The horn cactus gives me the vibe of something like a very protective stagnant energy, okay? Because it has its horns and it protects itself from the outside world, whether there's danger there or not, as it hoards as much water as it can. And hold, it hoards as much water as it can within itself. It hoards as much goodness and things of that, and things that would bring it praise. It hoards it within itself and protect itself from the outside world with these horns. You know what I'm saying? Now, let me see. So, you know, basically, like when you live in a, uh, in a uh, mind state of lack, you have to absorb all the resources that you can from wherever you can. Just like that fungus that we saw in earlier. See what I'm saying? You got to absorb all the resources that you can from wherever you can and hold on to them so that you can use them because you're afraid of when it's going to, you know. But in this circumstance, the universe is asking you to be more like a metabolism or like the body. Because in the body, people, like, when you, like, basically, you're asked to be like your metabolism, okay? Because when it comes to your metabolism, if you eat, let's say, six times a day, your body will metabolize all the food that you get faster than if you ate only once a day. Because your body is gonna, though your body knows it's gonna get more resources coming in, okay? That's the same thing with this, only it's in the opposite. This person doesn't know when their resources are gonna come in, so they hoard everything that they can. This is a hoarder. And that's possibly what their addiction is, hoarding, hoarding. Booming through resilience, resourcefulness, and discovery. Looks like I was wrong. When nothing seems to be happening fast enough or your ideas have dried up, you begin to question your rever uh, relevance. During these periods in life, you might feel like giving up, frustrated and resentful. That success will never happen for you. The issue here, however, is a matter of perception. The horned cactus thrives in the barren des desert scape, offering you the gift of water when all appears to be dry. If you look at its body, you see the natural horns that protect it from predators and the elements. You don't see, what you don't see are the deep roots that extend far into the earth, filling it with a continuous flow of water. This succulent, this succ, uh, succulent is a symbol of resilience, of resourcefulness, of your need being met in spite of appearances to the contrary. So it's similar to what I was saying, but it looks like it was all about, you know, um, digging deep. So, um, I believe that is it for my reading. I did my reading for today. Um, let's do a light keeper listener. Let's see what um, light keepers at our side today. Our change of the spirit, guys. Please reveal to us the um, the um, like people, but assist us with bitterness in our lives. Help us find the right like people for the to assist us with the bitterness in our lives. All right, so you're when it comes to bitterness in our lives, we're being asked to reach out to Kuan Yin. Ooh, carry compassion. Oh yeah, baby. All that good, tasty, kiss, caring, and compassion, baby. Choose to be loved. Do what is right for everyone involved. Offer a helping hand. Now, the story of Kuan Yin, I do know. Kuan Yin was an ascended master. Her father was a king. 
her father sent her away to, I think, I believe a castle or something like that. And as time went, went past, I can't remember why he did that. Honestly, I can't remember. But as time passed, I somehow like her, she learned, she was, uh, she learned how to uh, do medicine. She was really, really good at medicine and healing people. Okay. So word got around that she was a healer. And what happened was her dad got, he got sick, I believe. And the medicine required, uh, I guess it's like his hands or something. It was something about his hands, okay? And long story short, she had to sacrifice her own hands in order to, you know, save her dad's life. Even though her dad exiled her where he exiled her, okay? And she did it happily. She did it without um, grudge or without being grudged over. Okay. Now, when she did that, she grew uh, phantom limbs. You know what phantom limbs are? Phantom limbs are basically those. Uh, you know how you see like uh, the statues of like uh, uh, Buddha or. Uh, I want to say like Shiva or uh, not Shiva, but uh, I believe it is like like Shiva. You know what I'm saying? Those Hindu goddesses and gods and stuff. And you know how they have multiple arms and stuff extending out of the, out of the bodies and stuff like that. It's the same concept. She uh, grew these phantom limbs. Okay. She grew these limbs where she didn't need her arms anymore. You know what I'm saying? So her, her earthly arm she gave to her dad. Or she grounded it up. So that, you know, for the medicine that was needed for her father. And she did it with care and compassion. I'm not saying you got to cut your arms off and shit. So don't be out here cutting your arms off and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But the idea behind it is like um, she was full of compassion towards her father in order to do something like that. She was self-sacrificing. <clears throat> but we're going to look this one up too. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, fine in. <clears throat> All right. Kwanya is a Bahastava, Bahistava, I think that's right, Buddha-like being, and a goddess of mercy, compassion, and love. Though she's acknowledged in Buddhism and traditions of China, she goes well, I mean, she goes beyond religion and warms the hearts of all who call her on her. She has strong connection to healing energy, to a particular Reiki, and encourages people to offer care, forgiveness, and compassion to themselves and others. Compassion is about recognizing the spirit in others. It's about seeing that they come from the same source as you do. Yeah. Seeing yourself in others. I've been saying that for a while now. Well, that's all we got for the night. I um, love you all. Love all you guys. And um, may God bless all your souls. May God send love, light, peace, forgiveness. And most importantly, may God send um, the angel of protection over your soul so long as that you're doing right. Don't be out here doing evil and expect God to protect you from it. Yeah. Just let it go. Anyway, that's what happened with the bitter woman. Do your best not to be like her. Uh, tomorrow, we will uh, do, there's another example that we're gonna follow tomorrow. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, rest peacefully and may all negative things sent your way be reflected back. Amen. Peace.